The NFL Divisional Round of the Playoffs officially wrapped up this past weekend, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you my takeaways from the Divisional Round of the NFL Playoffs. Welcome to Critical Edition, my name is Jose Matos, and I love to talk about sports way too much with that being said, feel free to join me in the comment section down below and give me your thoughts on today's video. If you're new to the channel, welcome, my name is Jose Matos, and I run Critical Condition Sports. Pretty much in this channel, I just give you different kinds of NFL, NBA, and MMA uh, hot takes. Uh, I do weekly videos and reviews on various topics in the world of sports, so if you're into that kind of stuff, then definitely hit that subscribe button down below. Today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go over the NFL divisional round of the playoffs. We got, uh, you know, some exciting matchups that happened this past weekend. And I'm just going to go ahead and give you that breakdown to that now. So let's get started. So talking about the first matchup that we saw, we saw the Buffalo Bills and the Baltimore Ravens clash. Now, the Bills won this game 17-3. to And, you know, plain and simple for me, takeaways was, you know, I was very impressed with how good the Bills defense was. You know, the Ravens are a high-powered team, and yes, I do understand that the Bills gave up, you know, 150 yards rushing, but they were able to minimize the damage that Lamar was able to do to him uh, passing the football. Um, I feel like Buffalo is a team now that is well-rounded in the sense that they can throw the ball with Josh Allen, and they may not be so dependent on the run or be that great on the run, but the fact that the defense can be able to shut down other opponents is is very impressive you know they can put up win by putting up points and they can win by minimal points on the offensive side of the ball as far as the Ravens I'm not really gonna freak out here in this game um, you know I think that Baltimore as far as Lamar Jackson he took another step this year when he got a playoff win last week and I yes I do know that uh, Lamar did struggle he couldn't even finish the game but I think my my biggest takeaway is that I wouldn't pump the brakes on Lamar yet, I wouldn't hold off on him. I think that there's not a conversation that needs to be had about Lamar. I think that maybe you need to help him with his receiving core. Obviously, he lost his uh, left tackle. That might have affected him just a slight bit when it comes to getting this late into the playoffs. So I don't think anything less of Lamar. I, feel, I still feel like this year, he still took a step forward. And I think that I think the biggest question mark when it comes to Lamar Jackson will be next year, how far Baltimore can go with him. Talking about the next matchup in the AFC, we had the Cleveland Browns take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, in this matchup, you know, Kansas City won 22-17. Patrick Mahomes did get hurt and couldn't finish off the game. My biggest takeaway in this, though, is Baker Mayfield, to me, is still not the answer at quarterback. I think that a lot of people are taking this, in pers this, this kind of game in perspective and saying that Baker's the guy that the Browns are here to stay. And even though I do agree with you know, Kevin Stefanski being the right coach for Cleveland and Cleveland having a solid squad, I feel, I still feel like, and I've talked about this all year, the limitations with Baker Mayfield are very real. I think that, you know, with four minutes and 31 seconds left, even though it's on your own 30, 30 and 11, or fourth and 11, better yet, your coach will show you what he thinks of you. And Stefanski opted to punt the football instead of put it in his quarterback's hands. And it proved to be a very costly mistake because the Browns never saw the football again. They didn't see the football game because Andy Reid on 4th and inches, albeit inches, compared to that 4th and 11th that the Browns were facing, went for it with Chad Henney. He put a season on the line with Chad Henney at quarterback. Now, I'm not going to say that Henney's a, be a better quarterback than Baker Mayfield, but obviously you saw the disadvantage and how great Andy Reid is. And obviously we saw a disadvantage, which is there's no shame to that. You know, Stefanski is the first year head coach. And Andy Reid uh, knows the system and knows the game as better as any coach in the National Football League. But still, to me, the biggest takeaway in this is Baker Mayfield's not the guy. That's Peyton Manning. That's Tom Brady. You know, if that's, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, you're putting the ball in their hands, in my opinion, at that stage of the game. Going into the NFC side of the things, um, Green Bay played the Los Angeles Rams. And my biggest takeaway in that was, well, two takeaways. Goff, Goff can become a liability. I know he didn't turn over the football, but he looked very... I'm not going to say out of shape, but it looked very like the moment was too big for him. And it's crazy because this guy's already been in a Super Bowl, but he's not very athletic. And I feel like that's catching up to the Rams. You know, there's only so much protection that you can give. And Green Bay was really hitting them. Um, they were able to accumulate four sacks in this. And that Green Bay defense is, is in my opinion, legit. Uh, I feel like going into this coming off season, I think there's going to be some question marks with Jared Goff. I don't think he gets replaced. 
but I do feel like there's going to be some pressure heading into next year for a guy that's you know made the playoffs and already made the Super Bowl in his career. There's still going to be some big uh, pressure moments uh, next when it comes to next season. As far as the Packers, uh, this is a very legit football team. We talked I talked about their defense. Um, this offense is as explosive as it could be. You have Aaron Rodgers who is playing with like a fire under him. And it's really light him up. Uh, Lazard, I think, is a very interesting weapon for them. He led the Packers in receiving uh, with over 90 yards uh, receiving to that. Uh, Devontae Adams, obviously, is a stud. I don't even say much about him. We all know that he's a baller. Aaron Jones is a complete animal. Uh, again, over 90 yards rushing for this football game. And I feel like this Green Bay team is very dangerous. Uh, it's got a different feel to it than what it was last year. Um, you know, I was wrong with LaFleur and Rodgers. Uh, I feel like they're beginning a lot and they're playing good. This Green Bay offense ranks top 10 in both categories. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, their matchup next week and see what they can do. That lead, all that said, now going into the last matchup to review Saints uh, versus the Buccaneers. You know, the Bucks defeated the Saints at, you know, the Mercedes-Benz, uh, you know, Superdome 30-20. to uh, Tom Brady, pretty much biggest takeaway is how the Patriots really messed up. Uh, you really felt like Tom was still looking, had a couple pieces that were missing, you know, that the Patriots couldn't give him or just did not want to give him. And you saw what happens when he got those pieces. Tampa's playing in the NFC Championship game this weekend while the Patriots were watching, you know, the game, the playoffs at home. And it's crazy to say that, but, you know, Tom Brady is just still adding accolades to his career, taking this Tampa team who hadn't gotten to the playoffs since 07. It's been very impressive. Um, you look at the line of work, Cameron Brady was a leading receiver, 50 yards. When you look at, you know, other weapons like Antonio Brown, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, uh, Rob Gronkowski, all those guys combined for a mere 61 yards receiving in total. Uh, really shows you how good Brady can be and how not everything needs to be perfect for him. He showcased that this uh, this, this past season or in, in this past game, better yet. For Drew Brees and the Saints, um, for me, underachieve, you know, um, a lot of people want to debate that with different quarterbacks or like in Tom Brady's case. Uh, coaches don't want to put the right pieces around them, don't want to spend, don't want to build a roster. And that may have not been completely the case with Tom, but with other quarterbacks, like we're seeing with Deshaun Watson right now and how they're get, getting screwed over when it comes to how an organization is fail, failing to build around the quarterback and keep their quarterback happy. The last four years have been nothing but playoff buffs, bus better yet, for the Saints. And it's a team that they've drafted well. They surrounded Drew with great weapons. People discussed and debated that they had the best roster in football. And all you get is the furthest he got in those four seasons was an NFC championship appearance. I understand that things might have happened, but this was heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak, ladies and gentlemen. Um, You know, Drew Brees, as talented as he is, as phenomenal as he has been throughout the career as far as putting up the numbers, that's all it is, folks. Um, You can definitely... Definitely say that he's underachieved, and that's what we got this week. Just another underachieving performance. You know, one touchdown and three interceptions, you know, under 200 yards passing. Not really going to do much. He'll get Hall of Fame votes, deservingly so, deservingly. But, again, when you look at Drew Brees, I can't stop but think that, you know, it's really just an underachieving career. That's my video, folks. Uh, if you agree or disagree with me, let me know in the comment section down below. Give me your thoughts. What were your takeaways from this past weekend, uh, you know, NFL playoff games? And stay tuned for my next um, NFL playoff breakdowns for this upcoming week. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.